practically speaking, if if someone now has progressed on osimertinib, uh, how would they be able to try amivantamab or the combination or patritumab? Uh, I mean, one of the issues is, is this only on a trial? And, and, and I think the answer is yes, you can get amivantamab commercially, technically, although I don't know that it would be covered if you don't have an exon 20 mutation. It's uh, for many payers, it is likely to be a box to check. And if you don't have that box checked, you won't get it covered. And it, it's going to be pricey uh, outside of a, a trial setting. I would ask, you know, if you have a different view on that. And also, would you consider that clearly more promising than a chemo-based approach? Yeah, no. no. I mean, I, I, I would say right now, um, platinum-based chemotherapy still can be very effective. And um, so, so tech, I still think that is the standard of care um, upon progression on uh, osimertinib. I agree with you um, that um, I think people will, will start asking, you know, can, can I pursue amivantinab off-label? Um, my, you know, my bias is that, you know, I, I think we should try to do it in the context of a clinical trial, um, if, if that's possible. Um, and and we, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think it's exciting that we actually now have multiple different options in that space, right? You know, we have the Revetimab, a certain combination, we have the antibody drug conjugate. We actually have several antibody drug conjugates. Uh, right now, they're still in the context of a clinical trial, but um, I think that's how we're going to start um, identifying what the best sequences are. So my preference would always be a trial if, if it's possible. Yeah, and many of these are going to require a biopsy to get in, I would say. Yeah. Right? 